Okay, so this is lesson four. We're going to look at some more complicated rational expressions. We're going to be talking about something called stacked fractions today. Um, I like the term stacked fractions. Some people call them complex fractions, but to me that sounds like it's got imaginary numbers in it, and that's not what we're doing. So we'll be looking at a very important application of something called the least common multiple. In a way, we've already been using that back in lesson two, and we'll use the least common multiple again in lesson five. But I want to take a brief moment to talk a little bit about what the least common multiple is and how to find it since we'll be using it so much. So we're just looking at the least common multiple. We're not going to be doing anything with it. We just want to find it. In plain language, the least common multiple is the smallest value divisible by everything. So if I'm finding the least common multiple of four different numbers, I'm looking for the smallest number that I can divide evenly, that is no decimal, no remainder, by each of those four integers. So consider these two numbers here. This number here is 18, but I've got it factored for us. And this number here is 30. We're going to look for the smallest number divisible by both 18 and 30. And there are lots of ways to find the LCM, but the algorithm I want to use today is we're going to take each base that occurs. So a 3, a 2, and a 5. It occurs in either set of numbers. But we have to take it to the highest power that it ever occurs. So the 3 occurs to a power of 2 here, so I need it there as well. I don't need 3 to the 3rd because there's, you know, I just need the highest power that it ever occurs. If I multiply these numbers out, um, I get 90. And so this should be the smallest number divisible by both, what did we say it was, 18 and 30. So you see it's a perfect number, perfect integer that is, and 3. So it works. So let's try it again. This time we'll start from the beginning, though, without it factored. 84 and 189. What I'll do is I factor into a product of primes. So 84, we might say that is, yeah, 12 and what is that, 7? Well, I didn't do that, though. That would have been smart, though. Uh, 4 and probably 21, which is 7 and 3, and then 2 and 2. So 84 is 2, 2, so 2 squared times 7 times 3. 189 is divisible by 3, and I think that's uh, 63 which is divisible by 9, which is 3 and 3. So 189 is 3 cubed times 7. So we know that our least common multiple has to have a 2, a 3, and a 7. We're going to need 3 to the 3rd to match that one, and 2 to the 2nd to match that one. So that's 4 times 27 times 7. 756 is the smallest number divisible by both 189 and 84. Oh, I typed it in wrong. And there we go. Well, we can find the least common multiple of polynomials as well. We do the same process. We factor it first. x minus 9, x plus 9. This factor is as x plus 9 and x plus 3. So to find the least common multiple between this and this, I need each base that occurs to the highest power that it ever occurs. Well, that's, there's nothing that occurs more than the first power. So that's it. All right, we'll try the next one. Yeah, we're just looking for the least common multiple right now. We're not, we're not doing anything with it yet. On the next one, I can factor out a 4x and give me x minus 4. This factors as x plus 9 and x minus 4. So our least common multiple is 4x, x minus 4, and x plus 9. 
So that's kind of the mathematical way of doing it. I'd like to take a second, though, and do kind of a silly little exercise before you practice finding the least common multiple. And I'd like us to find the least common mat. Get it, LCM? Least common mat. So I've got two people here. And this mat's kind of bald, but he's got hair right here. He's got, you know, two eyes, a smile, and a mustache. This mat has hair on the top of his head, two eyes, but he wears glasses. He's got a smile with the mustache, but he also has a goatee. And let's say they each got ears, but this, this guy's got an earring. So this is Matt and this is Matt. Can we find the least common Matt? So the least common mat needs to be a mat that has all the features of both mats. So they both need a smile, eyes, they both have ears. Is there anything else that they both have? And they both have a mustache. This would actually be called the greatest common mat. This is, the, this is the most features they both have in common. But we're not looking for the greatest common mat. We're looking for the least common mat. Okay? So the least common mat means to have every feature that each mat has. So we need to give this least common mat some glasses, an earring, hair on the top of his head, and on the side of his head, and a goatee. Behold, the least common mat. All right? All right. With that w striking example in mind, would you practice finding the least common multiple on practice 4.1? Okay, let's see how uh, we did finding least common multiples. So this one here is already factored for us that we need a 2 squared. We need an x cubed. No, excuse me, just a squared. That's a 2 there. And then we need a y to the fifth because we need the we need each base a two x and a y and we need the highest power they ever occur. So we might call that four x squared y to the fifth. For the fifty and one twenty, let's factor it twenty five and two, which is five and five. So fifty is five squared times two. And 120 has a 5 and 3 2s and a 3. So I need a 5, a 2, and a 3. We're going to need 5 to the 2nd and 2 to the 3rd. So that's, we'll see here. I'll probably just use a calculator on that one. 25 times 8 times 3. 600. Well, it's the same procedure with the polynomials. We'll just factor x plus 3 and x plus 7, and then we have x plus 3. So the least common multiple between these two things must be x plus 3 and x plus 7. On this one here, I'll factor it as x times x minus 5, and the other one is just x plus 2. So it turns out we actually just need all three of these without any changes to them. All right, we'll do this one here. We have x minus 3 squared, because that's x minus 3 times x minus 3. And this is x minus 3 times x plus 2. So it gives us a least common multiple of x minus 3 squared times x plus 2. All right, so hopefully you feel comfortable finding a least common multiple. Now it's time to use them. So we're going to simplify these stacked fractions, these fractions within fractions. We're going to make it to where it's not fractions within fractions, but just a single fraction, okay? And it's really not that bad. So what we do is we find the LCM of all the denominators. So I'm going to just write that out to the side. How do I find the LCM of each one of these denominators? Well, they're basically factored for us. We know that we're, we got four different things to look at. 
And so we need to, um, we just need to find what bases occur. So 2 and 5 and x, which is 10x. All right, so um, what we do is we put parentheses here and here. I mean, they already are there because this division symbol here is grouping. And my goal is to get rid of 2x, 5, 2, and 5. That's the plan. We're going to multiply the top by 10x and the bottom by 10x. So I'm just multiplying by 1. If it helps you, you can think of it as over 1, but I don't usually write that. All right, I'm going to distribute 10x to each term. So when I multiply 10x times 3 over 2x, when you multiply a whole number, which 10x basically is, times a fraction, you should always try and divide first, right? So divide 10x by 2x and see what you get. 10x divided by 2x is just a 5. Now multiply that result times the top. So the answer is 15 for that one. Now we'll do 10x times 2 fifths. So divide 10x by 5 and you get 2x. And multiply it times the top, giving you 4x. Now we do the bottom. 10x divided by 2 is 5x times x is 5x squared. 10x divided by 5 is 2x, so minus 2x. Now, at this point, there's a slim chance that you can factor and be able to reduce this. Um, the only factoring I could do here is I could factor out an x on the bottom, but it would give me x times 5x minus 2, which doesn't cancel with anything, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to waste the, the ink. But if you do it, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just you don't have to. So that's it. This one. Well, we, we multiplied 3 over 2x times 10. So let me just kind of show that over here. The x is canceled, and the 10 and the 2 reduced to 5. So 3 times 5 is 15. We chose 10x, the least common multiple, because each when I multiply it to each one of these four fractions by 10x, we chose 10x to be something that would be divisible evenly by these denominators. So every one of those denominators should cancel out. That's the key, which is why we no longer have them. Let's try another one with a's and b's this time. My LCM is every base that occurs to the highest power it ever occurs. So I need a 2a squared b. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 2a squared b. So with the first one, b cancels out, and a squared reduces to just an a. So I have 2 times a is 2a. Here, the b's cancel out when I multiply it to this term. The b's will cancel out, and I have 6a squared. All right, when I multiply it down here, this time the a squares cancel, and I have 7b times 2b is 14b squared. And then I have minus, the 2 cancels out, simply a squared b. And you can factor out a a at the top. You can factor out a, actually a 2a from the top. And you can factor out a b from the bottom. But nothing's going to cancel, so I'm not even going to waste the ink. I'd have to have something in common to all four terms. All right, let's try one um, with polynomials this time. Same kind of procedure. We need to find the least common multiple, so we're going to factor all these denominators we're going to cancel out. So 
So this is an x minus 3 and an x minus 1. And that's 2 plus x over x minus 3. And I'm actually just going to call that plus a negative 1 over x minus 1. I like to do that. So these are my targets. This is what I want to get rid of, is all these things I'm putting red parentheses around. So the least common multiple for all of these things is simply x minus 3 times x minus 1. That's the only thing that ever occurs. All right, let's multiply x minus 3 times x minus 1 to the first term on top. They cancel out, the x minus 1s. So I'm left with simply x minus 3 on top left portion. On the next one, when I multiply x minus 3 times x minus 1 to the second term on top, everything goes away, and it's just a plus 2. Excuse me. In the denominator, I have to do x minus 3 times x minus 1 to the first term. And the x minus 3s will go away. So I need to multiply 2 plus x times x minus 1. So that's 2x minus 2 plus x squared minus x. Kind of awkward. They're kind of backwards here. All right, and then on the next one, um, the x minus 1s cancel, and I need to multiply a negative 1 times x minus 3, making it a negative x plus 3. We'll now combine like terms, and I have x minus 1 over, let's see here, x squared. Looks like the 2x cancels with this and this. Uh, x squared looks like plus 1. And that's it. Okay, it's time for you to practice. All right, uh, let's take a look at these problems here. On the first one, we should multiply by a 3ab cubed on top and bottom. So we are multiplying each term by 3ab cubed. This time, the b cubed goes away, and I have 6a times 3a is 18a squared. On this one, the a's cancel, and I have simply minus 3b cubed. On the one down here, the 3's cancel, so we'll have 4a squared b to the fourth. And on this one, one of the b's will reduce, so it'll be just 3ab squared. On letter B, we're going to multiply the top and bottom by x plus 2 times x minus 1. And I'm going to go ahead and just make that plus and put the negative there. I think that I find, I find that a little easier. All right, on the first term, the x plus 2s cancel, so I have x minus 1. In the next term, the x minus 1s cancel, so I need to multiply negative 3 times x plus 2. Negative 3x minus 6. All right, down here, the x minus 1s cancel, and they have 2x times x plus 2. 2x squared plus 4x. And then on this one, nothing cancels, actually. So I have 3 times um, x plus 2 times x minus 1. And I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra here. On the top, we're going to get negative 2x minus 7. And on the bottom, I'm going to do some scratch work, actually, here. Uh, this is x squared minus x plus 2x is plus x minus 2. But then I'm going to multiply it all by 3. So that's what that whole thing becomes. So 2x squared plus 3x squared is 5x squared. 4x plus 3x is 7x. And then minus 6. And that actually does factor. Uh, but it doesn't factor to anything with a 2x or a 7. So I'm not going to waste my time with it. 
All right, let's try the next one. Multiply by x plus 5 times x minus 2 on top and bottom. All right, when I multiply on top, there's just one term there. The x plus 5s will cancel. And I'm left with x minus 1 times x minus 2. And I've been multiplying them out, but you really don't have to. You can just do that if you like and FOIL it on the next time. Here, the x minus 2s cancel out, and I'm left with just x times x plus 5. And just to show that I don't have to multiply it right now, I won't. Then the x plus 5s cancel. I'm left with 2 times x minus 2. And so now, basically, if you think about it, this is just two separate algebra problems, one on top, one on bottom. We'll just collect like terms, and we'll be done. The top will FOIL to x squared minus 3x plus 2. The bottom will multiply to x squared plus 5x plus 2x minus 4. And I'll just rewrite this one more time. And we're done. Okay, letter D. We need to factor first because it's not there's something I can factor. I'm just going to make that plus a negative 1 over x minus 3, x plus 3. And then on the bottom, uh, everything's already factored for us. Yeah, this one's a little bit yucky because there's a lot to multiply, but we'll get through it. Multiply the top by x minus 3, x plus 3. And the bottom by the same. It's the least common multiple of all the denominators. Okay, the x plus 3 is cancel, and I have 4 times x minus 3. I'll go ahead and multiply as 4x minus 12. On this one, everything goes away, so it's just a minus 1. Down here, the x plus 3 is cancel. I have x squared minus 3x. Here, the x minus 3 is cancel. I have just an x plus 3. Combining like terms gives me 4x minus 13 over x squared minus 2x plus 3. And um, neither one of those look like they're going to cancel. Uh, factor, excuse me. And so uh, that's, that's pretty much it. That's the least common multiple. Yes, ma'am.